it's Joyce Conroy. You are on the block party with me and award-winning creative director and designer Ernie Sheffalo. This is Ernie's Corner. And Ernie, you picked a really great band. They are one of our favorites oh, on great. the block party, especially, you know, when the Canadian musicians, we started oh. to learn more about them. Five yeah. Man Electrical Band is certainly one that uh, was played on early FM radio. Well, yeah, they had a lot of hits uh, in Canada. You know, they were really successful in Canada uh, long before. I think they started in like 1968 or something. I mean, they were, you know, really uh, in there. And actually, I didn't know this but uh, until later, but Burton told me that the Guess Who had shared an album with them. And they they each each group had a side to the album and stuff. So he was very, he was very familiar with, uh, with them. And in fact, that's kind of how, I, you know, I was first introduced to them. Uh, Burton was a uh, really good friends with Les, uh, Adam Emerson. Yeah. Emerson. And he actually, um, uh, brought him over to the studio when at Pacific Ioneer, when he was in town and we, you know, I, I was familiar with them because of signs. I mean, I guess that was their biggest, song here in the states too it was a big one there too and it wasn't on this album it was before this album but what a great song and it, it, you know and it became really kind of an anthem for them and, and especially here in america and and uh so i i was aware of their music before i met them and i was i i, I first got turned on to them by that goodbye uh, goodbyes and butterflies album Great album. Great Excellent album, album. But, you know, it was recalled because they had a marijuana leaf on the cover. <laughs> you know, and I thought, wow, that's pretty, that's pretty ballsy. You know, they they really uh, you know, are out there and and not afraid to, you know, get some criticism or whatever. Uh and uh so that's kind of where I first started really being aware of them. And and the and the and like I said, the the hits that they had in Canada were multiple. And and very exciting. One of the things that that band had was a lot of personnel changes. Yes. You know, in Ottawa, you wouldn't think there's so many different, you know, musicians and stuff, but I guess they were, you know, and, and I, I guess I, you know, Half Past Midnight was a big song, too, as I remember, that uh, was an early on song. And so, um, yeah, they, they, they're, they're members. When we met them, okay, they were four guys. And... I'm like, where's the other guy? <laughs> oh, well, we're, we're kind of looking for him. But what we do is we take the money as five of us, and then we split it between the four of us and, until we find a fifth guy. And they were all, I mean, I don't, I don't think there was a band that had so many changes in the members. Uh, or, you know, I'm sure there were, but they, they were really, I mean, all over the place with the different people that they had in and out of this band. So another one, this was another one of those albums that we got that we really didn't have a lot of um, photography. We had four photographs and the the photographs were kind of weird because they were in groups of two. And I guess, you know, and, and that's when I started wondering, where's the where's the fifth guy? But there was no fifth guy at that time and of the release of this album. And in fact, two of the guys left before the album even launched. Till it got dropped, there were already two of the original guys that left the group and they were looking for other people to tour with. And, you know, it was kind of a crazy group. We never really had a situation like that. And what you see here is so we, we got four photographs and I'll, I'll jump over to that. Here's the here's the photos we got. And as you can see. You know, there's not a lot of interest in these photographs. No. <laughs> they're just, they're looking in different directions and they're, you know, and they were in groups of two, like I said, so they didn't even do a group shot. And I guess that was because of the change of members and whatever. So they, they were kind of slack on that. So they, they gave us the name of the album and, uh, you know, and, and these four pictures and, I, you know, at the same time uh, that this album came along, I was also, I had worked on the uh, Climax Blues Band cover that we talked about, and I was doing all these marbleization things with, I was really experimenting around with, you know, uh, oil uh, oils and stuff on water and, and uh, paints on water, and then you stir it up and you make an impression of it. And, you know, you can, and the more you do that, the, you get all these different, 
kinds of looks to what you're doing. And when this album came along, Joe Patagno uh, was the illustrator that I gave the assignment to. Joe uh, did a lot of work for us. He was with us for about a year and a half as a staff illustrator. We worked on some Black Oak Arkansas stuff. He's also, I guess, the the best thing he did, or the the, the thing that's most recognizable that he did for Pacific Iron Ear was the billion dollar bill that came inside Alice Cooper's billion dollar babies. He did all the line art for that. He left us and went on to work in England with Alan Aldrich on the Illustrated Beatles book. And then he went off on his own and uh, he did all, he is the Drew Struzan of heavy metal. He did all the Motorhead and all these different covers for these different heavy metal bands in, in, in Europe. And so he became pretty well known and still to this day, pretty well known. And, um, uh, and so I had this marbleized paper that you see in these backgrounds here. And, you know, I had this idea of, you know, the, the idea of um, a paradise, you know, creating this kind of good and evil of the, of the paradise. Uh, and we talked about it and I gave him these two pieces of marbleized paper that I had done. And so he took it and he airbrushed, borders on it as you see and then he put this circular thing with a good and evil characters in the corners um then you'll see this better when i sent it to you and then we put like clouds in the background i wanted to sort of get this idea of looking through a portal you know uh and having this beautiful blue sky and you know and 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 yet you have these kind of weird characters on either side of the uh, of the piece and, and, you know, working the way he did with the airbrush and these in painting these characters on there, I thought was really a great use of, um, of the, the marbleized thing that we did. It was a, a bit different because it was not as colorful as the climax blues band cover that I did, but you know, this was a different kind of feel. And so I did this lettering, uh, that, you know, we also added a little bit of a, 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 a glamour to the front cover that you're looking at and looking at this beautiful lettering and behind it is the clouds. And then on the back cover, um, I sort of carried over that feel of the lettering for credits and these bolts that were connecting everything top and bottom and all the credits are on the inside. So we just took the front cover uh, graphic that we did and we flipped it so that the, the characters were on the same side. So when you looked at the front and you turned it over, it wasn't like the evil guy was on the other side. He's still on the same side. So we thought that was pretty clever. <laughs> you know, I think it's cool. Yeah. And, you know, it's really funny because this isn't really a good uh, representation of the back cover. Um, I have a press proof of it and it kind of faded over time. When When I glue stuff down, uh, images down on board and stuff. I used to use a, a, a rubber cement. That was how everybody did it. There was a two coat version where you coat each surface and put them together. And then they came out with one coat where you just coated one surface and put it down. And it was really sticky. The only problem is that 45 or 50 years later, this now is 51 years later, that, you, that rubber cement makes everything kind of turn yellow and aged. And and so this back cover is kind of aged in because of the glue that I had taken the press proofs down and glued to a surface. But the actual piece is just as beautiful as the front cover. Um, and again, so we just took and flipped it. And this is a perfect example of a, a band that really didn't deserve a gatefold album. It really could have been a front and a back. But they had already agreed, the record company, Lion Records, had already agreed to doing a gatefold album. So, um, and and again, we had four photographs and uh, actually two photographs with four guys. And, you know, how do you stretch that out? You said everything you're going to say on the on the back cover. So what do you do on on the inside? So what I did was we created these two more portals and more marbleized paper. And I created these bolts connecting the two. And then I put the images in, you know, two in here and two over there. So that's kind of the inside. But again, the record company had already agreed to it. So they were, the group was really into, well, we want a gatefold album, even though it was a single record. 
and it still got this gatefold <laughs> album cover. And, and so it was kind of, uh, in a way for me, it was kind of like stretching it, you know, really, what do you do? I mean, it's, there wasn't any good photographs that you could use on the front cover. So, you know, certainly in the back cover, you needed to have credits and there wasn't a lot of, there wasn't any liner notes or anything. They didn't have any, this was really kind of a quick thing to do as we've talked about in the past with other things where we, we get a title, we get some images and okay, here you go, create something. Well, that's okay when you, when you do in a front and a back cover, but when you have to then now stretch it over an inside spread where it's double the front and back cover, what do you do? And so I think it, you know, we were able to solve the issue. I think, okay. I, I would have really liked it to have been some kind of a stronger representation when you opened it up so that it would like really, but, you know, I guess, you know, they felt, okay, at least you get to see who they are, you know? And again, they were pretty elusive about that because they were four instead of five, but yet the name of the, the group is five man electrical band, <laughs> but there's, there's, you know, one guy missing. And so it, it was a kind of a tricky kind of thing to do, uh, you know, when creating this cover. But again, I was a huge fan of their music. And, you know, again, because of Burton and the Guess Who that I met at the end of 1971 and we did Artificial Paradise, I, I became more and more familiar with, you know, Canadian music. And there were a lot of really, you know, I guess uh, I've heard before that a lot of people consider Bachman Cummings the McCartney Lennon of Canada. And and the songwriting and the music that they created was a lot like John Lennon and Paul McCartney. So having, you know, Burton as a friend and someone that we had by this time created a couple albums for, um, he was, you know, one of the good things about working with the groups and the, and the musicians rather than with the record company was they really spread the word, you know, Shep Gordon and Alice Cooper. We've talked about that. Burton Cummings, Butch Stone with Black Oak, a lot of those managers and groups, individual musicians really loved what we had done for them. And the industry was very small, especially all these musicians. These bands are all touring with each other and they all know each other and they're back. They go to each other's concerts and stuff. So our name was pretty well spread out uh, in the music business. And when you're dealing with record companies, uh, we talked about this on the, an album or two ago that we did with the, the, the you know creative director took the credit and didn't even give you know Pacific Ioneer credit. That was on Good Thunder. Yeah, good thunder. They, they, you know, they didn't even give me credit for the lettering. You know, they gave they, they gave the Lori, the, the photographer credit and they gave, you know, Rick Rodriguez, who was my schoolmate in college credit. But that guy just really didn't like us. That creative director didn't like us. And so dealing with record companies, it would never go beyond that. You Maybe you'd get a couple. We had a couple because of our relationship, our sales guys relationship when we were at Craig Braun with the record companies. Uh, we got, um, you know, we were able to get some work. And then the relationship I had with Bill Levy at Decca Records, he gave us a lot of work. Um, and so, you know, thanks to those handful of creative directors that worked at record companies, uh, you know, spreading the word. Uh, there was Ed Thrasher and Roland Young. Ed Thrasher was at Warner Brothers. Roland Young was at A&M. And we did work for both those labels. They, they, they really didn't like us at all. Didn't A.C. Um, Lehman help you too, you know, like yeah. with the Jefferson Airplane? Yeah, A.C. was really a cool guy because we had uh, met with him in New York and when I was with Craig Braun and I showed him an idea that I wanted to do for Grand Funk Railroad where I put the album inside a paper bag. And he loved that idea and asked if he was working on a Jefferson Airplane album. I think it was Bark. And he asked if he could use that idea. And yes, of course, our relationship was, uh, our whole purpose was to solidify the relationship that we had as a company with that creative director. Um, and so uh, in doing that, you know, and, and AC was really thankful. And the next album that the Jefferson Airplane did, he called us up. And said, "Hey, you know, we're gonna we've got this, uh, you know, you know, this uh, uh, Jefferson Airplane album, along John Silver, and I'd love you guys to do it." And it was wow, that was really great. So, and then AC gave us a couple other smaller things to do, but you know, he was old when 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 I first met him. He was probably three hundred years old, 
And so, I mean, but a great guy, but he was, he was ready to retire, you know, like Bill Levy was older too. Bill, when I met Bill, I was in my twenties and he was probably in his mid to late thirties. So these guys had already been in the industry for a while and created a reputation. AC had a great reputation in the record company. RCA was huge label and he controlled yeah. all of it. And Decca was a huge label and Bill Levy created and controlled all of that. And I was, again, we talked about this timing. Timing in, is everything. It's more important than money, who you know, uh, your ability and skills, uh, timing is everything because you could have all of those and if the timing's not right you're going to just sit there waiting it's like sitting at the starting line in idle you need to you, know, you need to be able to have that go and then you're you know, you're off and running which i was very lucky joyce in my career to always be in the right spot at the right time and you made such great use of it, too. You know, Ernie, I am looking at that, you know, and you really didn't have much to work with, but you, no. uh, you did a great <laughs> job. And you know what? The, th the thing about the five-man electrical band, they were not known as the five-man electrical band in the beginning. They were the staccatos. You know what? I had so much. I was going to ask you before we started the show, how do you pronounce that? It's such a weird name, staccatos. And and what does it mean? And, you know, and, and that was a very good move on their part to change the name i agree because we were because you know in those early days of fm you know like like electrical that really creates an image staccato is i think a musical term you know that that's used and and uh, i think it, i i i i forgot who suggested to them i think it was nick vinay who uh suggested to the band to uh change their name well, he had because... written a song they had a song called five man electrical, electrical band. band yeah and so you know it's like when alice talks about you know or shep talks about how they came up with alice cooper they were all sitting around they needed a name because they were the naz and there was already a group called the naz so they needed to change their name and they were signing to zappa's label bizarre records and they needed a name and they were throwing all these names around. And I forget, I think it was Dennis that said, you know, we should make it like an average everyday, you know, housewife like Alice Cooper. And it just stuck. And when they went to uh, Warner's who was distributing bizarre, uh, the PR guy, uh, AR guy said, well, all right, who's Alice Cooper. And they said, well, we're all Alice Cooper. And you go, no, you got to have one guy that's Alice Cooper. So Alice, you know, actually even changed his name. Vince changed his name. And uh, the rest is history. What an incredible group that was as well. Oh, and still right. to this day. It sure is. It sure is at all. Well, Ernie, let's do the mind meld. Now, I love their music. So I, I have a few picked out. We're going to see if we are on the same wavelength. OK, OK. Uh, my first pick from this album, first, first of all, the one that was the big hit was, you know, uh, Signs. And for me, Burton always would accuse me of picking the low hanging fruit. So that's, you know, Signs. Now I've said it. Yeah, I'm I'm a strange I'm a stranger here. It's such a great song. Yes. And I love that one. And I love Money Back Guarantee. <laughs> That was my choice, Ernie. Honest, I am. I'm raising my hand. Money <laughs> back guarantee. I have played yeah. on the block party previously, and that was a song. Our Baltimore FM station when they were featuring the five man electrical band. That's where I first heard and just love it. Yeah, it's a great song. And again, uh, they had so many good. You know, half past midnight. Great song. You know, that was earlier on. But I mean, they had they had. Even with all the transition of the members of that band, they still were able to produce great music. Yes. Which is really amazing to me because, you know, a lot of times, you know, we were talking about Alice Cooper. You know, that band stayed Alice Cooper forever until Alice went off on his own, you know. And, and of course, Glenn had passed away, but, but they were always Alice Cooper. And quite honestly, I think that the hits that that combination of people had was greater than anything they'd done since then. I agree. And, you know, you can say the same thing about the Beatles. You know, when Ringo came along, uh, everything changed. And, you know, sometimes band members are good. Sometimes they're bad. But the five man electrical band, like I said, I, I, I kept I said to him, where, Les, I said, where's the fifth guy? And he goes, <laughs> yeah, well, you know, 
we're we're looking for that fifth guy. We had a change here and there, and I think the drummer left or whatever. And and Les wrote most of the songs anyway, so it was kind of cool that he was still there. But you know that that happens a lot. And and uh, he said until we find that guy, we carry it like a little slush fund. We take the money as a five man electrical band. They even perform as with four guys, and nobody ever really asks where's the fifth guy. Yeah, because I said, don't you get asked about that sometimes? No, not really. You know, I mean, it's we're we're in transit. There's this guy's leaving, that guy's coming, so we're looking, and they always were able to dance around it, which I thought was pretty pretty incredible on their part. But yeah, money back guarantee, Joyce. I mean, low hanging fruit is signs. I like I'm a stranger here. It's great. You know, half past midnight. Though that one wasn't on there either with signs. But this album, money back guarantee, is definitely a slam dunk. Oh, it is. It's great. And then Absolutely Right is another good yeah. one. And yeah. I did, you know, because Signs was really a B-side. It yeah. was a Hello, Melinda, Goodbye, I believe, was the A-side. And yeah. then when the disc jockey started playing they it. it, they flipped it. They they yeah. thought Signs really related. Yeah, long-haired, freaky people. That's what they <laughs> were calling you yeah. and me, yep. Ernie, and so yeah. many others. And we could relate to that. Those Oh, lyrics. sure. It was that whole hippie movement and touching that target audience and, and and remember the time uh in the 60s and 70s early 70s you know signs were awful signs were like you know th that's it was like big brother telling us what to do we didn't you know nobody liked paying attention to signs because they were always kind of against what we were all standing for it's really funny how my parents didn't understand what my generation was doing just like I, older now, don't understand what this younger generation is doing, the way they're taught and the way they expect to just have everything handed to them. I mean, it, it's kind of weird how evolution, you know, things evolve and then they stay the same and they come back. You know, I think that what's going to happen now is there'll be a big pushback on a lot of stuff and things are going to start going. They'll go forward, but they're going to go forward at a less cram down your throat kind of place. You know. Boy, I sure hope so, Ernie. I Me really too. do. But uh, thank you so much. I've always loved, you know, the Five Man Electrical Band, even looking at their albums. And it was uh, just a wonderful revelation to know that you were involved with them in some way, a great creative way. Yeah, well, I, again, it was it was my pleasure. And Joyce, I love, you know, every week I look forward. I told you, it's like going home, you know, coming here and talking with you and, and learning. I learned so much from you. I, I you you know you talk about what I bring. What about the value you bring? The connecting the dots and just you know really giving the educational piece that connects with the piece that I'm talking about. It's such a great combination. I'm very blessed. Again, I'm very blessed. I, I, the timing was right for us. I'm very blessed, and I'm looking forward. This year is going to be a great year for us. I really feel that people are really picking up on the show and, you know, we're getting all these people and I, I'm just really excited. I'm so excited to be here on the block and have a corner, you know, just a corner on the block. And that corner, you handle it beautifully. And uh, we just, we, I, I mean, I'm finding out all about these bands. And you know, <laughs> I'm, you know, with, with thank you for your beautiful compliment. I'm just excited about the music. I see what it does for people. I see what it brings to them. And I look at the artists because, yeah, as you have said so many times, it's not easy being a musician. I could never live that life. And, you know, they really make, many of them make a lot of sacrifices. And just to give them that little bit, of time bands yeah, like and sacrifices Thunder. but even worse rejection yes sir yeah. nothing's worse than rejection the next thing to a musician would be an actor you put your heart out there you know you put your heart on your sleeve and in a myopic way as a creative director designer i do the same thing when i present something it's like here's something that i've created tell me that you love it I want to hear that you love it. And then you go, well, you know, uh, we're not sure. We're going to have to have a focus group. You oh, know, it's boy. like you start seeing it going like this. <laughs> it's just, but, but everybody's got that in their lives. I mean, you talk to most people that are successful, they'll tell you about the, the failures that they've had. You know, the trick is to, you know, just pick yourself up and dust yourself off and move on, keeping the faith in you, knowing that I could do this. I can do this and never give up. I mean, I never gave up. Sometimes I was depressed, but my depression never seemed to last too long because I was always busy. 
And I never really had time to, well, I created this thing and now it was rejected and I'm living in a slump, you know, like a, like a baseball player getting in a slump and he can't hit, you know, I mean, it, and it's depression and, 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 and a loss of faith in yourself which is it amazes me with musicians and with with actors they get so much rejection you know and and it, and it's hard and 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 the opportunities for us the opportunities were plentiful for Pacific Ioneer and even before that when you work for somebody you never have to worry about getting the work they give you the work somebody else is selling it and presenting it and you just do it so I was always busy when you work for yourself sometimes there's a little gap between work and Pacific Ioneer was never, never had that problem ever in the 14 and a half years that we lasted as Pacific Ioneer. And I'm still Pacific Ioneer to this day, even with the changes in personnel, like the five man electrical band, we were Pacific Ioneer with five illustrators, but maybe two of them were missing, but we still said five. Hey, you that's know? neat. I that, that is a great way to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. It really, it really is very similar, you know, and, and, and again, we, and I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir here. You've had rejection in your life. It isn't always been a bed of roses, but you never sit there and dwell. I've, I have a couple of friends that got to that point, lost it all and never recovered. Just laid there defeated. And it was sad. It was it's really sad. And I still know one of them to this day. And he never got over it. He's living in that moment. And that moment was just a moment. And. You know, I, I've often said before, you know, life is like showing up, you know, you're getting that that moment in the sun that that energizes you for until the next moment in the sun you get. The trick is to show up each morning and get that moment. When you stop showing up and you stop getting that moment, things start going the wrong way. I'm 78. I've been there every morning for my my moment in the sun. And I'll continue that even if I'm dragging myself there, but with one hand clawing my way to the sunshine in the morning. But hey, you got to have it. It's like charging your batteries. Yeah, and, and, and I'll drag along with you, Ernie. God bless you. Thank you God so much. You. Another wonderful segment. And I know we're going to be talking more about rejection. And yeah. uh, this is going to be a wonderful segment because the work that you're going to present, we're going to let our family on the block say, hey, they were wrong. You know, like yeah. uh, like like I, th I thought that Partridge family comp was wonderful. I was yeah, like, well, wait till you see what we got with Janice Joplin and with Leon Russell and uh, Brad. Some of these bands, I mean, and maybe sometimes it was right. I don't know. You know, I mean, it, there were so many things that enter into it. You know, there's political, there's, uh, you know, uh, egos. There's all these things. You know, when we first met Good Thunder, uh, they had a friend who was an older gentleman. He was probably in his 60s and we're all in our 20s. And his ideas were just really dated. And it became very hard for them to tell this guy, hey, you know, we need something more new. We need something more representational of us. And it's funny because at the moment, Joyce, I was going, ha, okay, we got it. Now that I'm older, I feel sorry for, in myself for thinking that. It was wrong of me to think like that. You know, it was really, here's a guy who was at, had his moment, but it just went away. And it's it was very sad. As I look back, I'll never forget that. I'll never forget that day that we were there and he was showing the ideas and the group was just like, no, nah, you know, we want these guys. They're young. They, they've done all these things. This guy was and it was a good I think it was a family member of a girlfriend that one of the guys had in the group or something. I don't know. But I, I I'll never forget that. And I'm sure to this day there are people that will say the same thing about me just because I'm older. And that's younger people really sometimes can't relate to that, but it's okay. It's okay. I still show up every morning. You got to be there every morning. And then when you stop doing that, then that's when you become history. And I don't want to become history yet. I want to keep making it. And we want you to keep sharing it. Ernie, well, thank just, you. So well, just another quick little thing. Ooh. It looks like I'm going to be doing Mark Farner's new album cover. Oh, wow. That is and, great. And I want to get him on the block party. Uh, we'll get him here on Ernie's Corner. I'm in I'm in discussions with them now. His manager, they reached out to me. And uh, Mark is just amazing. We hadn't talked in 50 years. And, that is uh, so you know, neat. Yeah, that so is... I'll get him to come on. 
my brother, uh, my brother was a disc jockey and he interviewed Mark and had, and Mark was one of his heroes and he had a chance to meet him and just yeah. spoke so highly of him. Mine too. I mean, I remember when Bonnie, I was a huge fan of Grand Funk Railroad right from the start. When Bonnie and I moved to New York within the first month, they were opening with a PG, they, a PG and E was opening for them and they were at the Fillmore East. And we went and it was amazing. Went two nights in a row. I mean, I'm your captain was like, I would, I, I don't think a song has ever moved me like that one. And in a year and a half later, I'm sitting with them. And two years later with Phoenix, you know, <laughs> Pluribus, I mean, it was just, and then to talk to him 50 years later, and there's this respect we both had for each other. And so then, and then that was about a month ago, a month and a half. And then just last week, they reached out and said, hey, you know, Mark's got this new solo album coming out and we'd love you to do it. And I'm oh, like, that's neat. Yes. That is so neat. Yes. 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 There's the sunshine. Yes. Oh, and you even got a nice sunburn there, too. I, I got a, I got a heck of a sunburn when you get too close. I got, now I don't know where the light went, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> God <laughs> bless you, my dear. You too, Joyce. And I love you guys. And thank you so much. And we'll see you next week. Sounds good. The Block Party at Ernie's Corner. Uh -huh.